Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to math class today on May 5th. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, <laughs> sure you're excited to be doing some math at home today. Uh, quick entrance test problem to uh, algebra problems to solve. So pause it and try these two just as a quick warm up and then we're going to move on to today's lesson. Alright, so hopefully you tried it and got those answers and didn't take you too awful long. Remember for algebra here we want to get x alone. We got to pay extra uh, attention to the signs. Uh, x is on the left hand side of the equal sign here. So we're solving the equation. I could have written solve the equation because that's what this thing is, an equation. And just to remember, I'm going to jump on this a little bit more in a second. An equation is just an expression set equal to another expression. This one, 76, is just a numerical expression. There's just numbers there. And over here, it's a variable expression simply because there's a variable in one of the terms. Okay? So this, this one over here, you have two terms here, a 9x and a negative 5. We always get rid of the constant term first. In other words, the term that does not have the x in it. So this minus 5, I'm going to get rid of. If I add 5, that goes away. You're left with nothing, like a plus 0. So I add 5 to both sides. That's my first algebra step. And I get 9x plus 0, I don't have to write the plus 0, 76 plus 5 is 81, now I got 9 times x equals 81, the opposite of multiplying by 9 is to divide by 9, 9 divided by 9 is 1, so I'm left with 1x, or just a uh, x, and 81 divided by 9 is 9. That is my answer, and that, remember that that answer is not magic, what that's telling you, not that you had to do this, but that's telling you that the one and only answer that could be plugged in for x to make that original equation true is x. And sometimes they'll have you do a check where you'll say check and then you'll write the equation, the original equation down and then you replace the x with your answer which in this case was 9 and then you don't do any algebra in your check you just go ahead and do the math. 9 times 9 is 81 and sure enough, 81 times minus 5 is 76, so you get 76 equals 76. It checks. That's a true statement. Again, I didn't say you had to check. Just a reminder, again, how this whole thing of algebra works at the very basics of it. Okay? <clears throat> Number two, pay attention to the signs. This one was definitely trickier because the way I did the signs here. So you have this minus here, but the 7 is positive. So to get rid of that positive 7, we take away 7 to make it go to 0 bring down my minus 2x, which will treat like a negative 2x now, equals 16. The opposite of multiplying by negative 2 is divide by negative 2. That's my second algebra step. And I get x is equal to negative 8. Alright, so that's your <coughs> um, two entrance task problems to go over. Two other things to keep in mind here. Simplify the expression. We're going to talk about stuff like this a little bit more. Remember, there's two main ways we learned how to simplify an expression. There was what we called um, combining like terms, and there was the distributive property. Okay, and remember that we can simplify an expression, something without the equal sign, all right, or just half of an equation. You know, sometimes you can just simplify one side or the other, and this is what we'll refer to when we get to the notes as working smarter, not harder. Um, yeah, working smarter, not harder. So if I had something like 7x plus 12 minus 5x plus 3, well, I have the 7x and the negative 5x, which are like terms I can combine to get 2x. And I have a positive 12 and a positive 3, which I could combine to get positive 15. And so my simplified expression would be 2x plus 15. Okay, so you guys all remember doing those combining like terms before. That's going to be something we talk about today. The other one is distributive property. If I'm multiplying to a expression, okay? So if I had something like, oh, let's make it a hard one so that I go over it. If I have a negative 3 that I'm distributing to, maybe something like 7x minus 4, when I distribute this, I'm basically multiplying negative 3 times the entire group, everything that's in the 
um, parentheses here. So it's going to be negative 3 times the 7x and negative 3 times the, which we'll treat like a negative 4. So negative 3 times 7x is negative 21x and negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. So that would be the simplified expression here after I've done the distributive property. So just a quick reminder of something else we did to simplify expressions from back earlier in the year. All right, let's move on to page two notes. <coughs> and I got most of the notes here for you. Okay, algebra review, remember our main goal with algebra is to get x alone. We wanna get, isolate the variable, get x alone. Um, two main rules. The first it says, remember, work smarter, not harder. The first rule is that you may simplify either side of the equation first. Okay, This gives us the simplest equation possible uh, before we start actually doing the algebra. So why would we want to do an algebra on a really hard looking equation if I can simplify it first and do algebra on an easier equation? And you can see the two ways we have here is first look to do the distributive property and then second, is there any like terms to combine? And sometimes the answer could be no to one or both of those questions, and that means you're already simplified or partially simplified. So, um, and, But the answer could be yes to both, too, and you can do quite a bit of simplifying. After you've simplified as much as possible, your next major step of simplifying, okay? So the first overall step was simplifying, and those are the two, two ways that you simplify. Then the second big step is doing the algebra, and that's what we call the inverse operation. That's what we always say the opposite. Right? So if you're adding 7, you can do the inverse and subtract 7 from it or whatever. So remember that you're allowed to add, subtract, multiply, or divide by any number as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. That's what we call the inverse operation step or the algebra step is what I've referred to it to for most of the years. So you got a couple different examples here. These have <coughs> simplifying in it here. So first we did a simplifying step of distributive property. Right? Then we did an algebra step of minusing 15 both sides, and then an algebra step of dividing 6 both sides. That got us all the way down to x equals 5. Here we did a simplifying step of the distributive property, then we did a simplifying step of combining like terms, then an algebra step of adding 10 both sides, and an algebra step of dividing 15 both sides. So again, these are good examples that you can look at as you're doing the work on page three. All right, so pause the video, see if you can do the harder one. This one has distribute and combine like terms. Pause it and then I'll go over the answer. All right, hopefully you paused it and tried it. So this one I would distribute first, the negative four. Negative four times two x is negative eight x. Negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28. Bring down the plus 5x and bring down the equals 34. Now I'll combine like terms, another simplifying step. I haven't done any algebra yet. Just combine like terms, making my problem simpler. Working smarter, not harder. And now, after combining those like terms, I got a nice easy two step algebra problem to do now. So, so far, all I have done is combining like terms. Now I'll do an algebra step. First algebra step in green, taking away 28 both sides, that leaves me with negative 3x equals 6. Second algebra step, opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is dividing by negative 3. So here's my second algebra step, and I get a x is equal to negative 2, 1x or a x. Alright? So as your examples of algebra, um, we're going to spend a couple days just practicing the algebra alone so that you can hopefully um, just remember all that stuff because we're going to learn a new operation. You've learned exponents before squaring. We're going to talk about square rooting tomorrow. And then next week we're going to combine what we learned about square rooting with algebra and put those two things together. Okay? So try page three. It's just six questions. And again, page three will be a graded assignment. It's due on Friday. So after you get three, page three, page five, and page six in, 
uh, take a picture of it and either upload it to Google Classroom or email it to me. All right, have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.